Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Art of Creation Homestead. My name is Jason. We're in the kitchen this morning, and it's that time of year we have a bunch of eggs. Eggs are all over the place, and so we are looking for great ways to use the eggs. And honestly, one of the best ways to use the eggs is in our Dutch baby. So Angela Kay's got a beautiful blueberry Dutch baby recipe for you. So let's take it over to her so she can show you how to get it done, okay? Now you want to start by preheating your oven to 375 degrees. You want to put two tablespoons of unsalted butter and this is probably about a nine and a half inch glass pie plate. You can also use a nine inch skillet. Either one will work. I usually just choose to use a pie plate. But I will tell you, if you choose to use a pie plate, take out a little insurance policy and put a lined baking sheet under it because it does tend to splatter out butter into your oven and you don't want to have to clean that. So, set that to, to, to the side briefly. Then I'll show you when to put it in the oven. Now in this bowl, we have four large eggs, very beautiful eggs. Poke them. And you want to poke the yolks so that they beat up better. And you want to get that nice and whipped up. I'm using my little half moon whisk. To me, that works best if you don't have the arm strength to do it. Use an immersion blender or a blender. Plus, it is a little bit of an arm workout. Now, once you get all those bubbles on top, I'm going to add three tablespoons of sugar. It helps with the flavor and it helps with browning. And don't throw the sugar everywhere like I just did. <laughs> kind of mix it in a little first before you start whipping again. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Now whip it really good. Now you've got good bubbles going on. So now you want to add three fourths of a cup of whole milk. Now you can use other than whole milk, but in Dutch babies, it don't do as well if you use 2% or definitely not skim. Could you use buttermilk? I've never tried it. I have to admit, I've never tried that one. So I don't know if it would work or not. It may actually weigh it down a little too much. That's a mess. It might. That's what you mean. Now, you want to whip that up. At this point, once you get that milk in there, you want to whip it till you, you get a lot of bubbles on top. See, you're getting a lot of bubbles. So now, I'm going to add, roughly measured, of course, one teaspoon. Half a gallon of vanilla. <laughs> one teaspoon of vanilla extract, which is probably a little more than one, but I never measure vanilla. Well, I, I don't want to lie. I did measure vanilla in the sour cream pound cake because mm. it took a tablespoon. So, that's a lot of vanilla. Now, we also have one tablespoon of unsalted butter that I have melted and let cool just a little bit. Now, you want to drizzle it in while you're beating Otherwise, it will solidify with the cold ingredients. But if you put it in while you're beating, then it won't. Now, you want to whip this up really good at this point. You want to get as much bubbles as you possibly can right now. At, now, at this point, you want to put your pie plate or your skillet in your 375 degree preheated oven to start melting this butter. Now, this is a pinch of salt and three-fourths cup of all-purpose flour. Now you want to mix it in slowly while you're whipping. Because otherwise it's going to clump. Now sometimes you got to get it started. It's you got it packed. <laughs> it's, not it's, not, it's not really packed. It's yeah. I it, see, it's I just see. settled, basically. I see, I see. Because packed would be wrong measurement. No. It would be too much flour. You're right. But if you just dump it in and then whisk it instead of whisking it while you're dumping it you're going to end up with clumps of flour of course. that you will not be able to beat out no matter how much you whisk it now at this point while your butter is melting you want to whip this sucker hard you <laughs> you want to get as much air back into it as you can because that flour deflated it a lot so you want to get as much air back into it as you possibly can now you see all those bubbles that's all air so now you want to leave it and see you can see more bubbles actually rising 
Mm -hmm. Now you want to leave it to rest just for a second while your butter is melting. Now we've got this out of the oven. As you can see, the butter is nicely melted. Normally I'll pour this in the oven, but for filling purposes, I'm not doing that. Now you want to come back over here and you want to give this a really good whip again because it's settled a lot. So you want to get that air back in that it that settled out. But it does need that little tiny bit of a rest because you have whipped it pretty hard. And there is a little gluten in there too, right? Yes. So it may even help to let the gluten settle and rest. Yes. And now, see, you can see the bubbles are coming back up from the bottom the same way that they did before. Now, we are going to go ahead and pour our batter in. Let's try to pour it in the middle, because if not, it will inhibit rise on the sides. And it will look very wonky. Although, this one is not going to rise as much as a typical Dutch baby. Because the blueberries are going to kind of weight it down. So don't expect it to be, get huge. Like a typical Dutch baby will. Now, here... I've got a heaping three-fourths of a cup of frozen blueberries. You can use fresh or frozen, but if you use frozen, make sure that they stay frozen. So don't thaw them at all. Now you want to just drop them haphazardly here and there. Just make sure that everybody gets some blueberry love. And don't throw them on the pan. Now you want to put this back in your 375 degree preheated oven until it's nice and puffed and golden brown. I'll show you what it looks like when we're there. Now look at this beautiful Dutch baby. Gorgeous. That was in there for about 40 minutes. Now it's going to start deflating obviously as you see in front of you, but it's still, it's going to be wonderful. Just going to slice it up right here, however many portions you want it. And put, maybe put a little maple syrup on there and enjoy. Beautiful bite of food right here. It's dripping syrup in my hand. That's okay. Mmm. Perfect. Just a big eggy pancake with some warm blueberry in there. So good. That's an amazing, amazing Dutch baby. I think Angela Kate, honestly, might be the best one with fruit in it you've ever done. Mm -hmm. Been real. That's so good. And again, because there's blueberries in it, you don't want to put a ton of syrup on it. Okay, you do want some, without a doubt. But you wouldn't, you don't want to put a ton of syrup on it because it'll just overpower the blueberries and just make you a big mess. You don't want that. You want to enjoy those, those delicious blueberries, especially these because we went to the farm and picked them ourselves. So, thank you guys so much for watching. We do appreciate it. My name is Jason. That's the smart one back there. Her name is Angela Kay. This is Art of Creation at Homestead. We love y'all. God bless you and goodbye.